Hi, I'm Dr De Bruin, and this is part four in a series of A-Level Chemistry exam question walkthroughs from the transition metal topic of AQA A-Level Chemistry. In the previous video in this series, we looked at some of the easier one mark parts that might come up at the start of an extended question about redox titration. And then this would be the big six mark finish piece where you need to do some quantitative chemistry or amount of substance. So the first thing that you're always going to do with an amount of substance type question like this is try to work out the moles of something. So search in the question and look for something where you've either got a mass or you've got concentration and volume. And here you'll see it's the potassium permanganate that we have both pieces of information for. So I know that my moles of potassium permanganate are going to be concentration multiplied by volume. The concentration is given here in the question. And then for the volume, I'm going to need to convert from centimetres cubed to decimetres cubed so that I actually end up with the number of moles. So if I multiply those two together, then I'm going to get 0.000244 moles of potassium permanganate. Now, in order for me to work out my moles of my other reagent, I'm going to need to use the um, symbol equation. Now, with a question this extended, there's a good chance that they would give it to you in the question because otherwise we're going to end up with more marking points than we can typically fit in an A-level question. But I would say it's a really good idea for you to have memorised um, ionic equations for manganate ions reacting with ethane dioate ions and also with iron 2 plus because they come up really, really commonly. And if this question wasn't asking us about percentage purity, there's a chance that you would need to synthesise this equation for yourself. So it's a good idea to just have it memorised that you're not having to work it out yourself under pressure in the exam. So now I can use the coefficients that are in this question to help me to work out how many moles of ethane dioate ions I have. And you'll see I've put here in 25 centimetres cubed. So we're thinking about the moles that are reacting with the potassium permanganate. And it's important that that's what we're working out because there's a next step that lots of people are going to miss out. So I'm going to look at my coefficients. Remember, I've already worked out the potassium permanganate. So I'm going to take that coefficient firstly and then take the coefficient in front of the ethane dioate ions. So I'm going to take my moles of manganate and divide by the coefficient in front of manganate. So I'm dividing by the thing that I already know the moles of and then multiply by the other coefficient. And that's going to give me moles of 0 0.00061. Now I'm going to work out how much is in 250 centimetres cubed, because remember, when we took that original sample, we didn't use that whole original 1.175 grams of sample in the titration. We used it to make a standard solution, and then we only used 10% of that standard solution in the titration. So here I'm going to multiply by 10, and obviously that's quite an easy calculation. So from there, I'm now going to look at this whole horrendous chemical down here, because, of course, there isn't just one ethane dioate ion in it. So um, if I'm looking at that whole um, that whole complex there, I can see that there are three moles of ethane dioate ions for each mole of the whole complex. So therefore, my moles of that complex are going to be three times smaller. So I'm now dividing by three to get 0.0020333. I can uh, calculate the relative formula mass of that compound. Again, this is something where in a slightly shorter question, you might be expected to do it for yourself. In one like this that is quite so extended, they might give it to you just so that there's one fewer marking point to include in there. But at any rate, it's 491.1 grams per mole. And so now I can break out masses Mr. Mole and multiply that by my number of moles to get an overall mass of 0.99857 grams. So that's how much of that complex I actually have. But I started out with a sample that weighed 1.175 grams. So not all of that original sample was actually this compound. There's some sort of spare in there. So to work out percentage purity, I'm going to take the mass that I've worked out was actually that compound and divide it by the total mass. And then, of course, I want it as a percentage because it's percentage purity. So at that stage, I multiply by 100 percent. And I get 84.98 percent. But if I look back at the um, numbers in the question, they've been given the lowest amount of precision is three significant figures. So therefore, I want to give my answer to three significant figures, which would be 85.0 percent. 
thank you very much for watching and I hope that you are finding these walkthroughs of A-level chemistry exam questions useful as part of your revision. If you are, then don't forget to like and subscribe and also let me know in the comments which topic you'd like me to cover next.